Welcome IWV. I'm Claire Ann Herbert. This is Ridgecrest Talk. And tonight we have a special guest, Tony Kane, who is with the Kern Valley Livestock, who is going to be joining the High Desert, the High Desert Fairgrounds on Friday and mm -hmm. Saturday night. Correct. Right? Right. All right. Well, let's so, get this party started. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, a big question for me, because I'm not really familiar with rodeos, is um, you've, you're going on Friday night and Saturday. What is involved in bringing the rodeo to Ridgecrest? Well, we've been working on it for the last couple of days, trying to get everything ready to bring over. And uh, we've been working with Mike Lemming with the fairgrounds, trying to get everything set up there. Uh, we'll get the stock prepared to get them moved over here on Friday morning and uh, Colleen's been working on getting the ground set up and so I think it's going to work out really good to where it's going to be two good events awesome. so we'll see how it works out. So now where are you actually located? Where do you have all your steers and all your animals and everything that... We're actually based out of Onyx, Cane Break, right okay. on the other side of the mountain and uh, we've been over there. We started Kern Valley about six years ago so it, uh, we've been growing from there. Everything we have, we raise. We don't try not to buy anything. You know, we bought our original cows, and but okay. we try and raise what everything we bought. So you're so. one big happy family, all from yeah. one. Awesome, yeah. awesome. So, is how is the traveling? I'm just curious. I mean, you've got to get them all in and drive them here, and yeah, you know, we go to different events throughout the year, but it, getting them here is probably one of the easier is actually one of the easier routes we have to, you know, take them. I mean, we go to Kernville, uh, Glenville. It's fairly close. Right? Yeah. yeah, Glenville and Bakersfield. And, uh, but uh, getting them here is actually not too bad, so. Okay, does it get them confused or do they do pretty well as far as they get hauled? They get hauled so. enough to where there's no, they actually don't mind being on a trailer. They're and travelers, huh? Yeah. You've been doing that since they were little. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's what you got to do. Um, so, what kind of events do you have planned? Are you breaking, real quick, are you breaking them up between Friday and Saturday, or is it going to be kind of a, a repeat, or do you have different events for both nights? They're going to be the same events Friday nights that there are Saturday nights, but you're going to may have different people or different teams. Like in the team roping, you'll have, you'll have the same two guys roping on Friday night, but you'll have them roping Saturday night, but they'll have different partners. Okay. Uh, and as far as the steer decorators, you know, I mean, you'll, they'll have different partners on Friday and Saturday night. But uh, same, it's going to be pretty much the same people, just different different partnerships. Okay. So, so now what time, does, what time do they, they start? Rodeo on Friday night starts at 7, and on Saturday night starts at 6. And if somebody wants to enter their child in the mutton busting or the, uh, if they want to get in the steer decorating, they can be there at, let's say, so, 5.30 tomorrow night. So now with these events that you're mentioning, could you give us a little bit more information for anybody that might not know what the mutton busting or the steer decorating is? Mutton busting is for kids up to seven years old, and they can get on a sheep. And now what's, what, what age starts that? You know, can you put them in really car seats on there? Like, no. <laughs> I, we, I have, I have. <laughs> I mean, you know, they they want a little kid. You know, we'll take. We got guys that are taking run along. Get them sure started they while off. they're young. Well, you know, I mean, get them started. But uh, yeah, I mean, they'll take and hold them onto the sheep while they so they don't hit the ground. We don't want a little baby hitting the ground. Oh no! <laughs> but they are—they are actually funner to watch. I mean, the expressions. And <laughs> well, yeah, little kids. Yeah, too. you know, and so, and up to seven years old, and they can—they can ride a sheep, and we will be. I hope everybody brings their cameras because you might just hit a you ten thousand dollar winner funniest home video right there. It, yeah, <laughs> especially in the steer deck rating. Yeah, if you get somebody in the steer deck rating that. That right there could definitely go on funny tone videos. Yeah, now you were kind of explaining to me before we started, um, I'd be really interested to share with the community what that steer deck rating is. If you have a neighbor or if you have a friend or whatever, you know, and you guys want to get a competition going, what, what you'd do is you'd enter the steer deck rating 
and you, we put a rope, 30 foot rope on the steer's head, and you got a knot 10 foot away, so that one person holds the steer 10 foot away, and they go out in the middle of the arena, and or past a line, and then they tie the rib. The second person ties the ribbon on the steer's tail. The fastest one wins. So now, is this one at a time, or do you have multiple people out here doing it at the same well, time? Well, one of my partners, he decided it'd be more fun if we had it a multiple deal. So yeah. what we're hoping to do is get, if we can get 15, 18 people in there on it, then we could, we got bucket shoots there. We'll do four at a time and just let four of them go at one time and just have a race. Oh, my and, goodness. Oh, yeah. It's Yeah, that sounds like a blast. It, actually, it is. It's fun to watch. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I bet. So now, how does the community get involved in that if they would like to be a part of it? They can show up at the fairgrounds there, at, on the, at the rodeo grounds, underneath the announcer's booth. My wife and uh, a few of our partners will be under there at the table, at the table there to uh, take sign-ups. And like to have sign-ups, you know, done by 6 o'clock on Friday night and by 5 o'clock on Saturday night. And uh, that way it gives them an hour or so to get everybody lined out. And uh, so if they'd like to get entered or get, you know, enter the deer decorating or the mud busting, be there early and get signed up. Right on. All right. Well, that sounds good. Um, so with the steers, how big would you say, you said, how, how heavy did you say they were? They're, they're not very big, probably 550, maybe 600 Now, are these pounds. the miniatures that you were talking they're about? They're half miniatures. <laughs> yes, they are half miniatures. Okay. And I'm just thinking they're like this big. Yeah, yeah they're not. You know, it's not our intention to get anybody out there and watch them <laughs> get hurt, but uh, it is fun to watch, especially when you got 500 pounds pulling you around and somebody's trying to right. tie a ribbon on their tail. Yeah, so. especially if you get multiple people that want to, like you said, compete and you know, become oh, yeah. a competition. and Yeah, so yeah, that sounds like is. a lot of fun. So make sure you get out there and do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so would you say... Now, if you're going to have 15 people, what, ha what has your success been on these before? Wait, you oh, know no. what? Hold that, hold that thought, actually, because we're going to go to commercial. Okay. I'm going to get you going, and I'm going to have to stop. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> no, if you don't mind. Um, we'll be right back. This is Ridgecrest Talk. Make sure you come back, because we got a lot of really good information about the rodeo. So come back after this. We're, we've got a uh, quick commercial, so enjoy it, and uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Ridgecrest Talk, and tonight we have Tony Kane, who is with the Kern Valley Sto um, Livestock. And I was just—I had interrupted a question that I just asked, so I'm going to ask you again. <laughs> um, we were just talking about the steer decorating, and um, we got a lot of good information there. But I, what I wanted to ask was what your success stories have been in the past, as far as um, how many people have gotten involved and and how well in the steer deck reading right yes you know it's fairly new to what we've been doing and s since we've been coming back over I think we had it last year then we had the businessman's calf dressing a couple years ago calf dressing oh yeah that was another <laughs> oh. get the businesses involved but I wanted to get something going to where the the people you didn't have to have a business just people could come off the street and get yeah, into what, it yeah what would calf dressing be you're you're actually we put a halter we put a halter on a calf they were pretty good size calves, size calves, and we got a big pair of panties. <laughs> and challenged the businesses, and I think it cost them two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars to get in it. And they put a halter on a calf, and there was four or five businesses to get in it, and they run the calf out in front of the audience and put this pair of panties on the calf. And the first business that did it, they won. They won a trophy. Yeah, I was going to say, but, was there a prize? Yeah, yeah okay. they won a trophy, and then the, the money went to one of the kids' groups here in the Ridgecrest Ridge area. Oh, okay. So that was a good thing. And well, that might be kind of neat for the, the steer decorating, is get some businesses involved. Yeah, we may have to. We might have to get, 
we might have to get Fritz to do some steer decorating for KZGN. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh oh. I should keep my mouth shut because he might have to or get me involved. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay, so moving on to events um, as far as this weekend goes. I'm going to stop talking about that so we don't you know, get in trouble. Get in trouble. Yeah. Um, so with the events, and also I know you brought some stuff, so I want to make sure that we show the community your, your gear here and what they're used for. Would you mind no. bringing some of that out? What it is, got a helmet. They started using this a few years back. A lot of times cowboys didn't. They didn't uh, use a helmet, and it just saved with a lot of concussions and a lot of head injuries. And, you know, I mean, the worst place for... So you're saying they used to do this without helmets? Oh, and yeah. Now, yeah, now they just used, like been using, they've been only been using helmets, I bet you, the last 10, 12 years. Well, you know, safety first. Yeah, cowboy, <laughs> and, a, and a cowboy has not a whole lot of protection against iron. So they came up with the... The helmet. This probably still doesn't help with a broken neck, though, right? No, it don't. It don't. But uh, it helps with the heads hurting quite a bit, you know. Oh, I mean. okay. So they started using the helmets, and uh, then they, everybody knows about Lane Frost, you know, seeing eight seconds. Right. And Cody came up with the vest. It's like a bulletproof vest, so that you can't get impaled. Kevlar. I mean, it's yeah, they're they're not bulletproof vests, but they are protection against getting hit uh, and, and still get a nice little bruise there huh you'll get a bruise but if you get stepped on the back or you get a horn or you get stepped on it displaces the weight so it's not just a three inch uh, puncture it's you know right. it's actually distributing it over the whole back so now you could incorporate some paintballing with that while you're yeah. on the steer and then you won't get hurt in the chair. actually I think that I mean I've seen guys show up my because we buck bulls in my house, and there's some guys that show up there, and I think they have had paintball splatters on oh them. Oh, so my goodness. Yeah, I have a feeling that they've been used for that. <laughs> so well, it sounds like fun. And then, of course, you got the bull rope, and that's what they hold, they hold on to. And uh, it's just a braided flat rope, and yeah. put rosin on it. It makes it sticky, and you can hold on to it. And the bell, all it does is adds weight so the rope does come off makes a little noise but uh okay so now is this does this have anything to do with the uh, roping no, no this is just strictly for riding bulls okay yep it's just strictly for riding bulls and they don't have nothing to do with rope oh rope okay. and rope's a completely different rope <laughs> okay so speaking of bulls um i know that i had spoken with a with skyler mm -hmm. about the bloodlines now right. there are multiple i did not know this but there are multiple bloodlines now, how is that affiliated with what you do with them or what they do? In the bloodlines, bloodlines are pretty much everything that you, you don't go, you don't want to breed to a, a milk cow to get a buckable, okay? So your genetics is pretty much everything there is, you know? I mean, we've got genetics of reindeer dipping. We've got, uh, we just got some calves that we just weaned and just got back from Bushwhacker, which is, uh, running for buck and bull, number one buck and bull of the year this year. Whether or not he wins, we won't know for another week. But, uh, you know, we've got uh, Red Wolf. We've got, uh, like I said, reindeer dipping, big bucks. So you want to take your genetics and, and cross them over the best you think you can to produce you know, the best buck and bull you can. And just because you have the best genetics does not mean you're going to get a buck and bull. I mean, one out of every probably every thousand calves makes it big time or 1500 calves uh, and probably one out of every 150 a buck mm. so it's not I mean you got to breed quite a few of them before you get you know it's not just because you breed this cow to this bull you're going to get something that bucks right so, so so now what happens to the ones that aren't the, the chosen ones are they do they become do you guys still use them for the rodeo or if if they're good enough for the rodeo yeah uh like we weed out our bulls and we've got we've got some pretty good rodeo bulls right now we've got a, uh, a couple of bulls i'm trying to get into the pbr in bakersfield uh we had them in lancaster pbr now what uh, is pbr professional uh bull riders okay and uh 
it was their touring pro events and that makes the touring pros want the guys go to to try and make it to the uh, Ford built tough which are on TV and uh, so <laughs> yeah you're just taking you know try try to breathe the best you can and hope for the best and expect the worst because you don't want to get your hopes up too high because you will be let down ah. so I mean it and it it does I mean it's you know they'll buck really good when they're young and also when they start getting a little older they start get temperamental oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah make pets out of them and then find out that they're better off with right. pan eating and not having a butt but all right all right well you know we're going to go to a quick commercial break again and um so and then we'll talk about some a couple more events and okay. so we'll be right back after this make sure you come back and learn more about the rodeo <laughs> Welcome back. This is Ridgecrest Talk, and tonight we have Tony Kane with the Kern Valley Livestock with the rodeo that is coming up this Friday and Saturday. And uh, we talked about a lot, and I, I want to make sure that we reiterate and get back to the community um, the the times and events and um, and everything that's involved, everything that is going on. Well, on Friday night, rodeo is going to start at seven and uh, Saturday night starts at 6. It, uh, we're going to have team roping, bull riding, barrel racing, mutton busting, uh, steer decorating. Uh, now we didn't talk about the was it the barrel racing. I had a friend. Now what I had a friend in school that I went with that was doing barrel racing. What is What exactly is that? Uh, She'd always talk about it but I didn't know. Yeah, the, the women they, you're on a horse and you've got barrels set up. There's three barrels, clover leaf plat pattern in the arena and uh, it's basically a horse race one one on one and they're running around the barrels and they like I said they do a clover leaf pattern and uh, fastest time wins and it's all it's a timed event and uh, now, do you get a lot of people uh, traveling from all over that do these kind of events is this like a competition oh, yeah. that uh, well that here like? here's gonna be more local to Hatchby Bishop you know, you got girls coming from Lancaster. Uh, I wonder if my friend's going to come. So they call her. Yeah, you have different. Uh, you have people from around the area at this rodeo here. But yes, they do travel to other barrel races and travel all over. So it kind of gets you get the word out as far as right the people right. that are involved in these. And then the team ropers will have you know the team ropers. Everybody will be here from Lancaster, Palmdale, Bakersfield. Yeah, what is that? Ridgecrest on the team roping. Yes. The they run out and they. You, the header will rope the steer around the horns and turning, and then the healer ropes the back feet. Oh, okay. Fastest time wins. Yeah. And uh, that's pretty much, you know, I mean, as far as it, it's everything set up behind a barrier. And so that starts your time, and then you have a timer up there, and when they drop the flag, you have a judge, he drops the flag, and when they uh, get, get everything caught and get it tight, and they can take and uh, get a time. Like I said, fast time went. Right. Now, last Saturday we had a uh, Calcutta at Tommy T's. And that's where they auction off the teams and the team will open the barrel racers. So you or anybody else can come in and sit down and they, they auction them off. If you want to buy a team for $50, $75, then when you get there, if your team wins, you may win. I'm not sure. So what this the, just happened? Was it the last Saturday last night? Saturday? Oh, okay. And, uh, then if you know your team wins, you could win eight, nine hundred dollars. Now, is this something for anybody that might not have done it on Saturday? Can you do like a last-minute bid or buy-in or no? Like that? This is, I mean, it's closed now until next year, until you, okay. until the next time we have a team rodeo and do a Calcutta. Uh, every, all the team ropers and all the barrel racers, and that's for the locals. They all entered last Saturday night, so that's the last day they can enter for the. Oh, 
for the local team roping and the local barrel racing. Now they can still enter the open and the team roping and the barrel racing, but they can't, uh, not in their local event. So when they auctioned it off, then everybody was there that wanted to buy and mm. it. It was a good event. It was a good event. Was it, it was pretty successful? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. And uh, we ended up quite a few barrel racers and team ropers. So. But if they want to enter the steer deck rating or mutton busting, like I said, they can just show up early on Friday night and Saturday night and get entered in that. Okay. So does that wrap it up pretty much as far as the, the events that are going on? Mm -hmm. And the timing now, what time does it end? Uh, it's probably whenever it ends. Huh? Well, about two. <laughs> it should, got all we try to run a two-hour event. Okay. And, you know, you don't want to sit there for a long time and get sore sitting on bleachers or whatever you want try and have a two-hour event and it uh, we, we usually do pretty good you know okay. trying to keep everything so do you do you have any rodeo clowns we that come out? we're not having one come to this one he's he's booked he's headed to Vegas Aww. but uh, you mean you're not gonna get dressed up and go out there and you know <laughs> I bet you we can get Skyler to do it he, I got a suit we can put him and in. now he has to because you just put him on the spot he has to it's he's, on TV he's used to it he's used to it <laughs> Well, he better get out there and do it then. <laughs> yeah. But. So um, now, real quick, because we're getting ready to wrap up, um, how many years have you been involved with the High Desert Fairgrounds doing this? We've been doing the rodeo here for, I think this is our, going on our third year. Uh, Mike Lemming with the, with the fair board, he's been awesome. I mean, he's wanting to bring rodeo back, and uh, he invited us in, I think it was three years ago. And uh, so we've been working with Mike for the last three years. And, you know, I'd like to see it get back over here. Uh, they used to have an RCA rodeo over here years ago. And for some reason, they quit having it. And uh, we were talking about it. And it's just, I mean, it fits. It, I think it's going right. to be great. Well, I would really like to see the community get involved in the steer decorating. I, think I, would, would, too. <laughs> I would, too. I would, too. There's got to be a lot of competitive people here. Oh, there is. There, there's uh, a lot of yeah, in Ridgecrest, there's a lot of competitive people. Yeah, I don't know that I'll actually, oh, I don't know. It does sound kind of like fun, but I, I would love to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> For yeah. sure. Yeah. I'll have to call, I'll call around and get some of my friends to get in. out there and do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Now, what are the kids' reactions to these usually? You know, that's. Have you ever had me. one get on one of the, the, uh, the sheep? Is it sheep? Yeah. Yeah, have you ever gotten, have they ever gotten on there and just been like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? <laughs> Do they cry? Oh yeah, they bawl, they cry, you know, uh, and, and uh, they don't get on us. We take, you know, depend on who they are, what are, you know, if they take them off. And, well, I'll to give you an answer, I mean. Yeah, well, I, I asked my daughter Charlotte this morning and she said, oh yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious. You know, and, and it's all fun until they get on their back. And once they get on their back, they get scared for whatever reason. Now, I've taken it and said, you know, a friend of mine's kid going, okay, if I put you on, you're staying on, so you, and he'll take right. off, well, I'll hold on to him where he gets off. Well, he eats it up, but he's scared to death, and he's wanting to get off, mm -hmm. but once they do it, now you can't yeah, get him off of it. the adrenaline rush, for and sure. you just can't get him off of it, and they don't get hurt. I mean, it's not, you know, for sure. it's... Well, Tony, you know, I don't mean to cut this short, but we're getting ready to wrap this up, and uh, thank you so much for being here with us. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be great to get out there to the high desert on uh, Friday and Saturday. So make sure you get out there and get involved. It sounds like a lot of fun. And also, um, IWV, make sure you tune in to the forums and the local news, which is uh, from 5.30 to 6, and Ridgecrest Talk from 6 to 6.30. So, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, and have a wonderful night. Thank you, and we want to see you at the fair. Come to the rodeo. For sure. Have a good night. Getting up, down, and back of the shoots Makes it rise and burn